The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. General Powell, last year you gave a campaign contribution to Senator McCain. You have met twice at least with Barack Obama. Are you prepared to make a public declaration of which of these two candidates that you're prepared to support? Uh, yes, but let me lead in with this way. I know both of these individuals very well now. I've known John for 25 years, as your uh, setup said, and I've gotten to know Mr. Obama quite well over the past two years. Both of them are distinguished Americans who are patriotic, who are dedicated to the welfare of our country. Either one of them, I think, would be a good president. I've also been uh, disappointed, frankly, by some of the approaches that Senator McCain has taken recently, or his campaign has, on issues that are not really central to the problems that the American people are worried about. This Bill Ayers situation that's been going on for weeks became something of a central point of the campaign. But Mr. McCain says that he's a washed-out terrorist, but then why do we keep talking about him? And why do we have these robocalls going on around the country trying to suggest that because of this very, very limited relationship that Senator Obama has had with Mr. Ayers, somehow Mr. Obama is tainted. What they're trying to connect him to is some kind of terrorist feelings. Let me say in terms of four men, Tony Resco we've named. He's Syrian born, he's been in Chicago a long time, he graduated from the Illinois Institute of Technology. There's a second name that's important here, his name is William Ayers, you used it, Billy Ayers of the weather people. Not a casual acquaintance, but he's not Barack Obama's generation. He's more a mentor to Barack Obama. They've known each other at least since 95. Bill Ayers and his wife Bernadine Dorn were principals in Barack Obama's first run for the state senate. In fact, they found a meet the candidate dinner a meeting at their home in 1995. They've served together on a critical phil philanthropy in, in Chicago, the Woods Fund. They've given money to important people in Chicago. They know each other a long time. Bill Ayers was on the New York Times on September 11th, quoted as saying there was an eloquence to bombs. He's not an attractive character for a president to hang out with without answering what he learned from Bill Ayers all those years serving together. I'm also troubled by not what Senator McCain says, but what members of the party say. And it is permitted to be said such things as, well, you know that Mr. Obama is a Muslim. Well, the correct answer is he is not a Muslim. He's a Christian. He's always been a Christian. You are absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. And you're absolutely right that that has not Christian come faith. Uh, my, uh, my Christian faith. But the really right answer is, what if he is? Is there something wrong with being a Muslim in this country? The answer is no, that's not America. Is there something wrong with some 70-year-old Muslim American kid believing that he or she could be president? White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs insisted today the president did not bow, adding dismissively, quote, he used both hands to shake Abdullah's hand. Michael Goldfarb at the Weekly Standard called the alleged bow, quote, a violation of more than two centuries of tradition and protocol, holding that American presidents never bow before royalty. 
So when I look at all of this, and I think back to my Army career, we've got two individuals, either one of them could be a good president. But which is the president that we need now? Which is the individual that serves the needs of the nation for the next period of time? And I come to the conclusion that because of his ability to inspire, because of the inclusive nature of his campaign, because he is reaching out all across America, because of who he is and his rhetorical abilities, and we have to take that into account, as well as his substance. He has both style and substance. He has met the standard of being a successful president, being an exceptional president. I think he is a transformational figure. He is a new generation coming into the world, onto the world stage, onto the American stage. And for that reason, I'll be voting for Senator Barack Obama. The question of Obama's birth, where he was born, is an important question. But the more important question is whether or not he is a natural born citizen because he was born in Hawaii. The conventional wisdom is that if he could produce a birth certificate showing that he was born in Hawaii, that would make him a natural born citizen. That's not true. That only makes him a citizen by birth. And there's a distinction between the two terms. A citizen by birth is a person who becomes a citizen because he was born in the geographical limits of the United States. And he was here lawfully, or his parents were here lawfully, and therefore, by birth, he's a citizen. Now that's because in the first sentence of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, it states specifically that a person who is born in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof is a citizen. Now, most people think that's a definition of a natural born citizen, but people forget that that was put into the Constitution not for the purpose of defining what a natural born citizen is as it applies to the President of the United States, but it was placed in the Constitution for the specific purpose of declaring that people who were part of the newly freed slave class were citizens of the United States and of the state in which they resided because the United States Supreme Court had ruled in the Dred Scott case that a person who had been brought over to the United States against his will could never become a citizen of the United States, much less a citizen of the state. So the place of birth that gives rise to citizenship by birth was addressed to the question of what to do with this entirely new group of people who would otherwise be stateless because they couldn't, under the Dred Scott rule, become a citizen having been born in the United States. Now, natural born citizen in relationship to the office of president and whether someone is eligible was in the Constitution from the very beginning. The 14th Amendment definition of citizenship by birth was not addressed at all to the question of one qualification to run for president of the United States. Even the language is different. It talks about a natural born citizen. Well, what is a natural born citizen? Well, another way of putting it is there is a law of the nature of citizenship. If you're a natural born citizen, you are a citizen according to the law of nature, not according to any positive statement in a constitution or in a statute, but because of the very nature of your birth and the very nature of the um, of nations and your relationship to the nation as a citizen. So what you have to do if you want to find out whether someone's a natural born citizen is to go back and look at what the law of nature would be or would require in order to be a citizen by birth. And that's precisely what a natural born citizen is, is one who is born to a father and a mother, each of whom is a citizen of the United States, or 
whatever other country that they're claiming natural born citizenship in. Now, what we've learned from the Hawaii birth certificate is that Mr. Obama's father was not a citizen of the United States. His mother was, but he doesn't qualify as a natural born citizen for the office of presidency. Get that. Lester. Thank you very much. First sentence. <laughs> World Net Daily's correspondent, Dr. Jerome Corsi, <coughs> reports that yeah, in the U.S. Right. District uh, Court of the District of Columbia, a lawsuit has been filed by investigators in Ohio and Colorado concerning the president's Social Security number. Uh, second sentence. Birth certificate? He, he, he reports. No, no, I did not bring up the birth certificate. <laughs> He reports that investigators Susan Daniels and John Sampson are asking why the president is using a social security number reserved for Connecticut applicants. And my question, did oh, do you that's know? Two sentences, uh, Lester. That, that, I, I, that two I, sentences. I, I, and yes. my question, do you know of <laughs> any go. record that the president ever had a mailing address in Connecticut? <laughs> Lester, I, uh, I, I, I am, I, 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 I know there are um, faithful readers of, uh, of your publication that despite... Including you. Uh, oh, well, I don't know that I would necessarily mark myself down as uh, uh, an avid reader or a faithful reader. I, I, I continue to be amazed, uh, Lester, that um, uh, two years after putting the president's birth certificate on the Internet... Um, Without a hospital and without do you think a the doctor... Was born here last Beg your Do you think the president was born in the United States? I don't know. I'd love to get the real birth certificate, wouldn't you? Uh, I've seen the real birth certificate. I put it on the internet, and uh, I appreciate your uh, I appreciate your forthrightness on the uh, on the birth answer. Listen, thank you. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.